Welcome back to Everyday Stoic. The greater the difficulty, the more glory in surmounting it. Skillful pilots gain their reputation from storms and tempests. Circumstances don't make the man, they only reveal him to himself. Seneca said, we are often more frightened than hurt, and we suffer more in the imagination than reality. Marcus Aurelius coped by not allowing his thoughts to be overrun by negativity. The universe is change, our life is what our thoughts make it, he wrote in his nightly diary. Counsel Epictetus. Other people's views and troubles can be contagious. Don't sabotage yourself by unwittingly adopting negative, unproductive attitudes through your associations with others. Marcus Aurelius devoted himself to do good to my fellow creatures and bear with them. Wherever there is a human being, there is an opportunity for a kindness. We are waves of the same sea, leaves of the same tree, flowers of the same garden. Nothing to my way of thinking is a better proof of a well-ordered mind than a man's ability to stop just where he is and pass some time in his own company. Until we have begun to go without them, we fail to realize how unnecessary many things are. We've been using them not because we needed them, but because we had them. The chief task in life is simply this, to identify in separate matters so that I can say clearly to myself which are externals not under my control, and which have to do with the choices I actually control. Where then do I look for good and evil? Not to uncontrolled externals, but within myself to the choices that are my own. It stares you in the face. No role is so well suited to philosophy as the one you happen to be in right now. If you apply yourself to the task before you, following the right reason seriously, vigorously, calmly, without allowing anything else to distract you, but keeping your divine part pure, as if you might be bound to give it back immediately. If you hold this expecting nothing, fearing nothing, but satisfied with your present activities according to nature, and with heroic truth in every word and sound which you utter, you will live happily. And there is no man who is able to prevent this. Is any man afraid of change? What can take place without change? What then is more pleasing or suitable to the universal nature? And can you take a hot bath unless the wood for the fire undergoes a change? And can you be nourished unless the good undergoes a change? And can anything else 
that is useful be accomplished without change. Do you not see then that for yourself also to change is just the same, and equally necessary for the universal nature? When you're alone you should call this condition tranquility and freedom, and think of yourself like the gods, and when you are with many, you shouldn't call it a crowd or trouble or uneasiness, but festival and company, and contentedly accept it. Epictetus The key is to keep company only with people who uplift you, whose presence call for your best. No matter how isolated you are and how lonely you feel, if you do you work truly and conscientiously, unknown friends will come and seek you. Happiness and freedom begin with a clear understanding of one principle. Some things are within our control and some things are not. It is only after you have faced up to this fundamental rule and learned to distinguish between what you can and can't control that inner tranquility and outer effectiveness become possible. If someone is able to show me that what I think or do is not right, I will happily change, for I seek the truth, by which no one was ever truly harmed. It is the person who continues in his self-deception and ignorance who is harmed. Wild animals run from the dangers they actually see and once they have escaped them worry no more. We however are tormented alike by what is past and what is to come. A number of our blessings do us harm, for memory brings back the agony of fear, while foresight brings it on prematurely. No one confines his unhappiness to the present. To be everywhere is to be nowhere. If you really want to escape the things that harass you, what you're needing is not to be in a different place, but to be a different person. Make the best use of what is in your power and take the rest as it happens. It's ruinous for the soul to be anxious about the future and miserable in advance of misery, engulfed by anxiety that the things it desires might remain, its own until the very end. For such a soul will never be at rest. By longing for things to come, it will lose the ability to enjoy present things. Don't let your reflection on the whole sweep of life crush you. Don't fill your mind with all the bad things that might still happen. Stay focused on the present situation and ask yourself why it's so unbearable and can't be survived. Frame your thoughts like this. You are an old person. You won't let yourself be enslaved by this any longer. No longer pulled like a puppet by every impulse. And you'll stop complaining about your present fortune or dreading the future.